Ladies and gentle cast, welcome back to part number two of the Race Prep Guide, a guide, a series where we talk about how do you prepare for a league race or even your career mode races or in general any kind of racing that you're doing in F1 23, whether it's being a 25%, 35%, 50% race or even a 100% race. So these are going to be the basics that you should already master. Uh, by the time you know uh, f134 launches which is coming very soon and it's going to give you an advantage from the get-go itself uh, regardless of the setups that you're going to be using uh, by the way you know if you want setups it's always in my track guides and in my discord server see you there uh, back to the story though it's always going to help you to carry over the good habits that you develop from one game to another in part one uh, just say just a quick refresher we talked about how do you set your tire pressures correctly for the hard tires medium tires, soft tires, intermediate tires, and also the wet tires. So all the five combos that you're going to be using in a specific track. And also what are the temperature ranges for different compounds, C1 to C5. All those things have been covered in part one. Link in the top right and also in the description. Now let's get into part two here. Uh, to continue on from our first part, we are still in Japan because there's a lot of uh, high-speed corners in sector one. And that's going to require a lot of downfalls, right? And in sector 2, sector 3, there's more and more straights. So that's going to require a bit of top speed so that you're not a boat uh, or sitting duck on the straight. So you're going to be requiring quite a balanced amount of downfalls here in the track. And uh, that's going to also affect your choice of fuel. Japan, as we know, has a lot of fuel burn naturally because there's a lot of uh, full throttle zones in sector one itself and sector two and sector three it's all flat most of the part right so how do you determine if you want to go with a low downfall setup in the circuit or do you want to go for a high downfalls you know we're going to be talking about that very quickly if you love the first part as well hit a like on that hit a like on this subscribe as well to stay up to date for more guides more <clears throat> excuse me more guides more setups as well free ones everywhere you know and uh, all this good stuff coming along some acc content as well coming very very soon and uh, well not a slot is coming to acc as well but we'll talk about that in a separate one so let's get into this real quick and see how we can start with the process of determining the downforce and fuel level in any given track Okay, and before we proceed, just a quick disclaimer here on the settings that you can actually do before you start your test session is to reduce the AR difficulty. So I've reduced it from 105 down to 90 so that I don't get attacked by the AI and I can do my clean labs in clear air to get a good understanding of the fuel burn. And I've turned off safety car as well. So, you know, no shenanigans, no issues with sudden stoppages. Anyway, under safety car, you'll be burning less fuel. Uh, here are my camera settings in case you ever wonder it's also in the description of every video so far i've updated it finally and i uh, thank you for asking as well uh, keep the feedback coming and let's proceed to the important part here most of the time you'd be starting off with a hard medium strategy around any track similarly for japan i'm just trying out the same strategy here right and i'm starting off with plus three laps of fuel it's already quite high fuel burn here but i just want to see how much is the maximum limit in case i want to be safe on a day that i didn't practice right and i'm going to be loading in my japan setup here with the high downforce setup so a bit higher wings i'll show you the lower downforce wings first which uh, also works if you're fully practiced up you have all the confidence going into the session for a uh, you know, park Fermi race, basically, you want to have a lower downforce, uh, ideally for the race, you know, from uh, from your qualifying setup. So if there's no, if there's a park Fermi turned on, um, you know, the setup is fixed from qualifying to race, this is probably what I'll run. Or maybe just two clicks higher, as I'll show you towards the end here. Now, for the start of this test session, I'm going to be using a higher downforce level here, plus four wings, front and rear. And I'm also adding one extra front wing so that you know the car is a bit more drivable when the car is heavy with fuel and there's less grip on the hard tires on the track and pressures as you see that's what i'm running currently in the japan setup after i fine-tuned it after part one to be exact and once you're ready go out on track and rev up the car and go just go for it so we'll ride on board the entire first lap here because there's a lot of details that I want to share on how you can uh, optimize your test session here. 
So we've already reduced the AI for good reason so that they don't attack us throughout the lap here. And into turn one, two, three, you can see, take a look at the throttle, that, uh, the throttle green bar. You know, you might have to rewind a few seconds to restart and see it. But, you know, how do you manage your first lap? You will notice that, you know, from qualifying to the race, your braking markers are going to be a little longer. So you'll probably have to brake a few meters earlier and you have to be a little bit smoother on power as well. You can't just mash the throttle on the exits. For example, here, coming into this half, you know, this is going to be a very good example. You know, I've tried the same inputs immediately after qualifying, come to a race and that doesn't work, right? So you have to be a little bit smoother. The next thing is, you want to make sure you are burning up as much ERS as possible in your first lap in the test session, right? Not in the actual race, only in the test session. Burn up as much ERS as possible, as low as possible, maybe maybe around 40 to 50% to start off, right? And the reason for that is because lap two onwards, you don't want to be using any ERS at all and you do not want to use any DRS also. This will give you a good understanding of how much fuel is being burned each lap and also how much ERS you're going to be burning every lap without any assistance. In clean air, no DRS, this is what is going to happen. Now let's speed through the rest of the part and see what happens. But just before we speed through the rest of the footage here, uh, lap two onwards, you want to be making sure that you have taken a note of your fuel level and also your ERS level. Um, what I like to do is just open up Notepad on my PC and then start just uh, typing all the random numbers, right? So lap one, or I'll just type in start of lap two. Uh, I'll share show you on the screen, right? Start of lap two, 3.09. And then what's my ERS level? In bracket, I'll just put 60. And, you know, you just run through every lap. You don't have to look at it every lap because if you want to get an average from your running, Lap to lap, you know, maybe this lap is going to be 8%, next lap is going to be 10%. Uh, it's going to throw you off a little bit. So you want to get an average of how much you recover or loss uh, every single lap throughout your shorter stint. So let's take a look at that at the end of lap number 8. And we cut back on to the end of lap 6. So, well, uh, I lied. Two laps shorter than expected, but five laps. So you can see the fuel has burned on a little bit. Uh, we have recovered a little bit of battery. Tire wear about 20%, 22% after six laps of running from the start. And once you hit 20%, you know, you start to lose a little bit of pace as well. Uh, you can always uh, run this practice program a little bit longer for a bit more consistency. 20 laps, maybe 15 or 10 laps, 15 laps, whatever your race uh, stint is going to be. And you can see uh, the average fuel burn and ERS recovery after you run the high downforce. Once you get that, you want to be running a, a similar test but with lower downforce. So reduce your downforce by two clicks or three clicks and run it again and maybe even a third time with even lower downforce and compare everything. Obviously, <laughs> with the high downforce, fuel burn and ERS recovery is going to be quite bad. A lot of fuel burn and you'll recover your ERS very slowly. Top speed though, it's going to be pretty good as you lower your downforce. Uh, the lower you go, the better it's, it's going to be for attacking and defending. All right, tire wear. This is where it really shines on the high downforce. It's sort of equal between the high, mid and low downforce most of the time, but the race pace that you get out of the high downforce coupled with the tire wear, it's really what matters here. Race pace in clean air when you have high downforce is also going to be much better. Partly because you have more downforce, so aero uh, you know, helps you to keep more stability in the car and give you more confidence as you wear down your tires even more. Otherwise, if you run a low downforce without uh, being in a DRS train, yeah, you're probably going to be like the Scuderia Ferrari 23 in 2023, uh, poor race pace. In your DRS train, make sure you are sticking in the DRS. Use your battery a little bit if you have to, to stay within that one second because DRS is pretty powerful in this game. Best usage though for each of these different approach of setups, high downforce most of the time is best for uh, dry to wet races or wet to dry, um, especially if it is having at least more than half of the race is going to be rainy. 
just go for high downfalls you'll be very very competitive in the rainy conditions and in the dry you'll be okay as well and downfall strikes like more uh, i was going to say monza uh, downfall strikes in monaco and uh, singapore hungary sandford even spain these are the places that you want to be using high downfalls even for the race if park ferme is turned off make sure you use high downfalls for your qualifying and then switch to medium or low downfalls for the race and medium downforce low downforce usually you're going to be using it in the dry race like i said right um, any any dry race you can use it and medium downforce is also okay to use in mixed condition races where it's just having maybe probably a quarter or half race is going to be raining so you can opt for a little bit of a low downforce or middle downforce here and power tracks like spa monza las vegas and to some extent you can even say baku because you have that super long straight where you need the top speed you can use it to make sure you are a little bit more competitive while overtaking and defending just make sure you are using your battery in the first two laps to stay within the drs range after that you can start managing your battery start managing your tires as well and well yeah that's gonna be pretty much it uh there's nothing much to add on over here if you have any questions obvious uh thing to do is you know ask in this comment section so i will attend to that and i will help your guide your if you need more assistance and also make sure to check out part one where we discuss about how to properly set up your tire pressures for all kind of conditions dry wet uh, hard tires medium tires soft tires even the inters and wet tires all those and in part three after this in two days ish we're going to be covering all the different uh, race lengths that you can do at 25 percent onwards so 25 percent 35 percent 50 percent and 100 percent what are the optimal strategies that you want to go for that's all so take care everyone thank you so much for watching and tuning in and uh, i'll catch you in the next one till then stay safe stay safe into turn one uh, no, sh no shenanigans and heroics into sunday ward or maybe into turn one in suzuka so see you next time take care and goodbye